Okay, so the following is a balance sheet of Medusa Limited as of 31 December 2007. So we've got our fixed assets, property and equipment, they all total to 735,000. We've got our current assets, uh, which includes stock, debtors, and bank, a total of 490,000. And then we list our current liabilities, which are creditors, and they total 87,500. So our net current assets are 1,137,500. Then we've got share capital and reserves, 350,000, 8% redeemable preference shares, the nominal value of $1 each, going for 350,000. Then we've got 525,000 ordinary shares of um, $1, which is the nominal value, and they're going for 525,000. Then we've got share premium, um, 52,500, and then we've got profit and loss account, um, 210,000. Again, they give a total of 1,137,500. So additional information. The preference shares were redeemed on 1 January 2008 at $1.05 per share. Already, by just reading this statement, we already know that um, the nominal or power value of the preference shares, which are redeemable, are $1. So if they are now being redeemed at $1.05, it means that these are being redeemed at a premium, okay? And how was this redemption financed? So part of it was financed by internal cash resources of 175,000. And then the other part, they issued ordinary shares of $1 each at 25 cents premium per share. So it was a mixture. They used internal resources and which affect the retained earnings. And they also issued shares as well um, to finance the redemption. So we are told that the preference shares were originally issued at a dollar four cents per share. So initially when these shares or redeemable shares were issued, they were issued at a premium, a premium of four cents but now they are being redeemed at a premium of five cents. Okay, so again, this is also an important aspect which will affect our share premium account. And then note number two, on 1 January 2008, a computer was purchased for 650,000. And we're being told that um, this computer was bought on cash and the cash was raised. They had to actually issue a convertible debenture to finance um, the procurement of this computer. Okay. So those are the notes that we have. And we're told first one to be pay a balance sheet of Medusa Limited after completing transactions on 1 January 2008. So what I think is critical is for you to be able to follow the same concept that um, we're using in all our tutorials. It brings perspective and really makes your life much more easier and trying to do it any other way. This is the most clear way that I've seen um, when attempting these questions on capital redemption. Okay, so we'll try and attempt this question. So the first thing that we said is 
we have to draw our two tables, redemption at par and redemption at premium. Okay, so whenever you're attempting this question, that's what you're supposed to, to do. So we're going to say redemption at par. So it can either be through, you're financing it through retained earnings, or through um, a fresh issue of shares, all right? And if this redemption was at a premium, we then have to add the redemption at premium part. So here we are just looking now at the premium. How are we going to address, okay, the premium portion on our redemption? So we know that this is going to be affecting our share premium account. So are we going to debit our retained earnings? Are we going to debit our retained earnings? or we are going to debit our share premium account. Uh, I think we're going to debit the share premium account. Okay. No? You're correct. Okay. So let's start at the redemption at par side. Um, once we finish that one, we then come to the redemption at the premium side. So for the redemption at par, I guess the first thing we want to know here is for our redemption, okay, what was our total redemption? And then we break it down to see what was the par value of the redemption and what was the premium uh, value of the redemption. Okay. So what was the total value of our redemption? So we're going to simply say, we are told here that the preference shares were redeemed on 1 January 2008 at $1.05 per share. Okay, so our redemption value is simply equal to $1.05 times the number of shares which is 350,000. And how much do we get? 367,500. 367,500. Okay. Okay, and then what we now want to know is to break down this amount. How much is the par value? And how much is the premium? Um, the par value is 350,000. Yes. And the premium value? It's 17,500. Okay, 
So these figures are the ones that we take, the par value and the premium value, because we know that is our redemption. And we apply into our table. So in our table here, for the redemption at par, we know that it is 350,000. And for our redemption, the premium value is 17,500. So that's what we, we now have, which is a good point. All right. Now, we want to know if it's the redemption at par. Was this redemption financed through retained earnings or through a fresh issue of shares, or it was both? Was the redemption financed through fresh issues of fresh issue of shares or through retained earnings or both? Both. Okay, perfect. So if we know if it's, it's both, because we're also told that um there was an issue of shares and cash resources were also utilized as well. All right. So we already know that when we are dealing with the redemption and looking at the power value. If there were any issue of shares, that's where we start, okay? And if the issue of shares is not sufficient to redeem the 350,000, that's the remainder would then be financed by your retained earnings, okay? So in this case, what we already know from given the question is that this redemption was financed by 175,000. So there's 175,000 that was used from your internal cash resources. And then we are told that issue of shares was just enough um, at $1.25 per share. So the fresh issue of shares that were issued, were issued at a premium. And it's on the balance after 175,000 was already used. So we can do the calculation, okay? We want to calculate, first of all, we want to calculate Um, issue of shares, of shares issued. We want to know how much of these shares were issued. We are not given plainly how much of these shares were issued. What we know is that of the redemption, $175,000 was used from internal resources, and then the remainder was then um, from issue of shares. Okay, so what we already know, our redemption value of the preference shares that were redeemed, we said the amount is how much? The total value of the preference shares redeemed Uh, 350,000. Sorry? 350,000. The total value, no, the total value we got oh, it's... from redeeming the preference shares. Uh, 367,500. Okay, and we are then told that 175,000 we were utilizing our internal cash resources. 
So we then say let's the internal cash resources, which was 175,000. Because we know the remainder was the one, the remainder was then financed by the issue of shares. So 367,500 minus 175,000, what do we get? It's 192,500. So 192,500 is the issue of shares. So this is the fresh issue of shares, 192,500. And this includes the premium. This 192,500 includes the premium. So we over here. Yeah. And we say 192,000, 192,500 is our issue of shares. All right. But remember, I said this 192,500 includes the share premium. So you can then use your mathematics for you to um, separate the ordinary share capital and the share premium account. How do we do this? We are told that um, these ordinary shares were issued at $1.25 each per share. All right, so if we divide this 192,500 by a dollar 25, we are going to get the number of ordinary shares, which is going to be our share capital. Okay, so if we say 192,500 divided by a dollar 25, which is um, the share price plus the premium, we are going to get our ordinary shares or our number of ordinary shares. And our number of ordinary shares is going to be 154,000. 154,000 times a dollar. Dollar is the power value, right? Times 154,000 shares we get $154,000 and this is our ordinary share capital. Ordinary share capital, this 154,000. And then our premium would just be the difference between 192,500 and the ordinary share capital. So our share premium Or would then be equal to 0 0.25 times 154,000 shares. Which is So I hope it's making sense so far. So I can just maybe do another breakdown and just say, ordinary share capital, 154,000 and then our share premium. 38,500. Does that make sense? The total should give you 192,500. 
which is this one. Is it making sense? Yes, sir. Okay. So from the tutorials we we're doing the past two days, we know that we have a fresh issue of shares. They are journal entries we're supposed to do. Okay, so we are going to debit. What are we going to debit for the fresh issue of shares? The bank. How much is it going to be? And what are we going to credit? Uh, the share, ordinary shares. How much? It's uh, 154,000. And what else are we going to credit? The share premium. How much? 38,500. Perfect. Okay, so that is now what we have. So of the 350,000, 192,500 was financed by issuing shares. All right. And this 192,500 includes the share premium. So what remains is what then goes to your retained earnings. Okay, so we are going to say nominal value of redemption. That formula that we talked about. 350,000 and then we less issue of shares. And please note here, we include the share premium, including share premium. So that will be 192,000. So we subtract. 250,000 minus 192,500, what do we get? We get 157,500. Hundred and fifty seven thousand five hundred. And this is what we know is going to be going away to our retained earnings. So this is going to be financed by the retained earnings. And it will be transferred to our capital redemption reserve. Okay, so we now know that this remainder of 157,500 is going to be financed um, through our retained earnings. So our issue of share capital was not enough um, for the redemption. So we are then going to use the remainder um, through our, our retained earnings. So we now know the value here is 157,500. Okay, so we now have to do the journal entries for our retained earnings. What are they? What are our journal entries for the retained earnings side?
what are we debiting and what are we crediting? Um, so, but for this question, um, and he wants 75,000 from, uh, from internal cash resources. Yes. Okay, I get it. Uh, we debit the retained earnings. We debit the retained earnings. How much? One hundred and fifty seven thousand five hundred. Hundred what? Hundred and fifty seven thousand five hundred. And what do we credit? We credit the capital redemption reserve. With how much? With um, 157,500. Okay, so in a literal sense, for the power value side, that's it. And then we go to our share premium side. How are we going to handle the 17,500? Are we going to debit the share premium account or we are going to debit the retained earning? Um, we're going to to debit the share premium account. We're going to debit the share premium account. Why? Why are we debiting the share premium account? Uh, because uh, there was a fresh issue of shares and the issue shares with the premium. Because there was a fresh issue of shares, yes. And then what else? And the shares later issued the way issued at a premium. And the shares being redeemed were originally issued at a premium. Okay, yes, perfect. So we said that there are about four conditions that have to be met, all of them, for you to be able to debit the share premium account. The first is the shares redeemed must or should have been originally issued at a premium. So from this question, we are told here that the preference shares were originally issued at a dollar four cents per share, which means that they were is originally issued at a premium. If they were not issued at a premium, they would have been issued at one dollar. Okay, because one dollar is the par value of the preference shares. According to this question, we are told that the preference shares have a par value of one dollar. So if we are now being told that they were originally issued at $1.04, it means that this $0.04 cents 
is the premium. So these shares were originally the premium. So condition number one is met. So yes, the shares were originally issued at a premium. And then the second, there has to be a fresh issue of shares that are financing this redemption. And we have this one here. So yes, there is a fresh issue of shares financing the redemption. And then the third option is that the amount of the premium debited to your share premium account could not exceed the amount of the premium originally received. Okay. And then the last one is that the share premium account should never end up with a debit balance. So we've got a yes and a yes on these two, which means we can go ahead and debit our share premium account. But how much are we going to debit with our share premium account? Are we going to debit with 17,500? Uh, yeah. How much are we going to debit with? I think 14,000. Why? Uh, because the amount uh, of premium to be debited to the share premium account should not exceed the amount of premium originally received. Exactly. Okay, so on this issue, we can't debit 17,500 because when these shares were originally issued, they were issued at a premium of four cents. So if we say 350,000, which was the number of shares for the preference, redeemable preference shares, if we say 350,000 times 0 0.4, which is the premium that they were originally issued. So they were originally issued at a premium of 350,000 times 0 0.04. And you said we get what, 14,000? So this was the premium in which these preference shares were originally issued at 14,000. And now they are being redeemed at 17,500. So they are now being redeemed at a premium of 17,500. So you notice, according to the rule, rule number three, the amount of share premium debited to the share premium account should not exceed the amount of premium originally received. So the amount of premium originally received was 14,000. And when we are now redeeming these preference shares, we are now redeeming them at 17,500. So we cannot debit 17,500 
um, because if we debit 17,500 to a share premium account that only has 14,000, it will result in a negative share premium account. And according to the rules again, they, we cannot have a negative share premium account. Okay, so we only debit it up to the amount that it was originally issued at. So we are going to debit our share premium account, as you rightly said, with 14,000, all right. And then the remainder or the excess, because we redeemed these as 17,500 and we can only debit the share premium account um, up to um, the amount that was originally issued. Okay, up to the premium that was originally issued of 14,000. So the remainder then goes to our retained earnings we then debit our retained earnings with the remainder. So we are going to debit our, what, our retained earnings with 3,500. So even though I usually don't like to complete the journal entries, I'll just complete them, okay? So we are debiting our retained earnings 3,500 and we are going to credit our bank with 3,500. And here we said we are debiting our share premium account with 14,000. We are going to credit our bank account with 14,000. Okay. I hope it's making sense. So remember, according to the question, what we are redeeming here is these preference shares, the deemable preference shares of one dollar each, worth three hundred and fifty thousand. So we can as well debit them to remove or to write them off in the preference share, and then credit our bank because we are going to be paying these uh, preference shareholders. So we can as well write that journal entry, correct? I'm going to debit our preference shares account with 350,000. And then we're going to debit we're going to create it, sorry. Our bank with 350,000. I was still, I was still together. We are not yet lost, right? Yes, sir. Okay, cool. And then the last part, and we are done, is narration number two. On 1 January 2008, a computer was purchased for 650,000. The cash required was raised to an issue of 700,000, 10% convertible debenture of $1 each at par. Okay, so we are being told that a computer was bought for $650,000 using cash. Okay. And then the cash was raised from where? From a debenture. So we can do the journal entry. It becomes easier for you after that. So we want to do the journal entry for the debenture which was issued. So we got cash, say 900,000, correct? 
So we are going to debit our bank with the same 100,000 we got. And we got it from where? From issuing a debenture. A debenture is sort of like a loan, right? So credit um, convertible debenture. Say 100,000. So this will be a loan in your liability, this depends. And your bank, so your bank is going to increase by say 100,000 because we received money from where? From a debenture which was issued. That's the first leg. So you can narrate cash received. from a convertible debenture issue. That's the first journal entry. The second journal entry would want to complete is for the purchase of a computer. So when we buy a, an asset, a computer, our assets increase. So we are going to debit our computer or asset account with how much? 650,000. And we bought it for cash, okay? So if we bought it using our bank, our bank is going to decrease. So we're going to be crediting our bank with 650,000. Therefore, being purchase or procurement of computer using cash. So we are literally done with all the transactions that we need to do. Now it's just an issue of us plucking figures into our answer. And I'm sure if you were doing it somewhere else on Excel or anything like that, you would have been done. So the question wanted us to prepare a balance sheet of Medusa Limited after completing the transactions on 1 January 2008. So statement of financial position. As at 1 January 2008. Please don't forget to mention the name of the company, Medusa Limited, always. So I'm going to try and do this a bit faster. So we've got our fixed assets, property, equipment. We've got property, equipment. And we also now have a computer here. For our property, we already given is 350,000. Our equipment is 385,000. Our computer our computer 
we have the journal entry here for our computer that we did. This one. So our computer is increasing by 650,000. So we come over here and we place 650,000. So our computer So we then add three fifty thousand plus three eighty five thousand plus six fifty thousand. What do we get? Fifty thousand plus three eighty five thousand plus six hundred and fifty thousand. What do we get? And then we have our current assets. It's one million three hundred and eighty five thousand. One million three hundred and eighty-five thousand. Okay. And then we go to our current assets. We've got stock. It has and bank. Stock, debtors, and bank. So what we're going to do is I will just open brackets here and put the original figures. So for stock, we had 108,500. For data, we had 171,500. And for bank, we had 210,000. Okay. And I'll stop here a bit and put the total amount here. And then we go on to share capital and reserves. We've got redeemable preference shares. If they're still there, let's just put them. Three hundred fifty thousand. We've got ordinary shares. Five hundred twenty-five thousand. We've got share premium account. which is 52,500. We've got profit and loss account or your retained earnings. Which is 210,000.
and we know that we are going to create a capital redemption reserve. With that, we we'll then add those figures here. And then we'll move to our liabilities. For our liabilities, we have creditors. And our creditors were 87,500. And we have got our CD convertible debenture. And then we add that. And then we add our reserves and our liabilities to get the total amount. So here it is total. Reserves and liabilities. Here it is just total liabilities. Here it is total reserves. So I'm sure right now we can now start filling in the blanks, okay? So we are now just going back to all our journal entries and we are filling in the blanks. I hope you had finished copying. So let's start with our redemption at par. Our retained earnings, we are told here, I will use the black ink. We are debiting retained earnings with 157,500. So we come to retained earnings. Here. And we subtract 157,500. Okay. A debit means we are subtracting our retained earnings or profit and loss account. Let me also just write retained earnings list. People do drama for me. Retained earnings. And then what was the corresponding account? We're going to credit our capital redemption reserve with 157,500. Hundred and fifty seven thousand five hundred. It's more or less like adding a eh? plus hundred and fifty seven thousand five hundred when you credit the capital redemption reserve. So we're done with that. We go to the next one here. We debit our bank hundred and ninety two thousand five hundred. So bank hundred and ninety two thousand. 500, we are increasing, eh? When you debit your asset, you're increasing it. And then we're going to credit ordinary share capital of $154,000. 
So it's a plus 154,000 dollars. You go back to the journal entry we created. We're also going to credit the share premium account with 38,500, which is again increasing the share premium account. So plus 38,500. We are done with it, right? We go to the premium side. We are going to debit retained earnings with 3,500. Debiting retained earnings means we are subtracting it. So minus 3,500. And then we're going to credit our bank with 3,500. Credit, crediting an asset or a bank means we're subtracting. So minus 3,500. We then come here, this other journal. We debit our share premium account with 14,000. A debit of a share premium account means we are subtracting it. Okay. So share premium account minus 14,000. And when we debit our share premium account, we credit our bank, which means we are also subtracting our bank with 14,000. Minus fourteen thousand dollars. Okay, we are going with everywhere we put our journal entry here. For our, let's start with this one. When we for our debenture, when we received cash for the debenture we issued. So our bank account increased by 700,000. So we're going to debit our bank account with 700,000. So plus 700,000. And what then happened? We credited our convertible debenture this loan we issued with 700,000. So we go to our liabilities and create debenture, convertible debenture with 700,000. So that plus 700,000. We then go on to the computers or the asset that we bought using cash or the bank. So our asset increased by 650,000. We bought a computer for 650,000. I think we already wrote this one. Yes, this one, 650,000. So we can just say plus 650,000, okay? And we bought it using what? We bought it using cash. So our cash, our bank reduced by 650,000 because we bought this computer using money. So we're going to credit or subtract our bank with 650,000. Okay, I think there's one last journal that's remaining, this one. For the redemption of the preference shares. 
So we are going to debit our preference share account with 350,000. So preference share minus 350,000. We are debiting it. And what are we going to credit? We're going to credit our bank because we have to definitely pay these guys. So we're going to credit our bank with 350,000 because we are redeeming these preference shares. So we're going to be buying them back and we're going to be buying them back, back using cash. So credit $350,000. We'll credit our bank with $350,000. And I think we are done with all the adjustments we needed to do. Is there any journal that is not ticked that we did not touch on? I doubt. So we are now simply filling in the gaps. So here it's 108,000. 500, that is our stock. Our data is again did not change, 171,500. Our bank did change. So we are saying 210,000 plus 192,500 minus 3,500 minus 14,000 plus 700,000 minus 650,000 minus 350,000. Uh, what do we get? What do we get for our bank? I got 85,000. You got $85,000, which is correct. So we then add 108,500 plus 171,500 plus 85,000. And... It's 365,000. It's, yes, it is 365,000. <laughs> Okay, so I think I wrote them. So I'm supposed to say here 365,000 here. When I write 365,000 here. I'll write 365,000. And here I'll write 108. And then 171, 585,000. So I am now going to add 1,385,000 plus 365,000. What do we get? One million seven hundred fifty thousand. Okay, yes, correct. I'm one million seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So we then move on. To our share capital and reserves. So for redeemable preference shares, 350,000 minus 350,000, we get zero. 
So because we have redeemed these preference shares, meaning they no longer exist because we have bought them back, or we purchased them from the preference shareholders. And then we've got ordinary shares. So it's now 525,000 plus $154,000. What do we get? Six hundred and seventy-nine. How much? Six hundred and seventy-nine thousand. Six hundred and seventy-nine thousand. And then we go on to our share premium what do we get? 52,500 plus 38,500 minus 14,000. Correct. And then for retained earnings, 210,000 minus 157,500 minus 35,500. That's 49,000. And then we go to capital redemption reserve. This one is straightforward, 157,500. So we then add our share capital and reserves to get the total. And how much is it? I got 962,500. Correct, 962,500. And then we go to our creditors, our liabilities. For our creditors, it did not change 87,500. Our convertible debenture, this straightforward 700,000. So we add 87,500, our creditors, plus our convertible debenture, say 100,000. What do we get? It's um, 787,500. 787,500. So we now add our total share capital, our total capital and reserves. Plus our total liabilities. So it's 962,500 <laughs> plus 787,500. What do we get? Um, one million. One million seven hundred and fifty thousand. Yes. And I'm sure it is. Yes. So we managed to balance it with one million seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Okay, so this is how somebody would attempt it, who would attempt this question on redemption of shares. Um, for sim sake. For me, this is a much more easy approach than a machine gun approach or a guessing approach. Okay, this is much more straightforward and much more easier. Always break them down. The par value and the redemption value, and then find out whether there was a fresh issue of shares 
whether the redemption was financed through a fresh issue of shares or through retained earnings. If it was, if there was any fresh issue of shares, that's what you deal with first. Okay? You subtract it yes, from your redemption value and you get your retained earnings, what, what, what? And then you go to your share premium, redemption at a premium. Redemption at a premium, the concept is always this. You have to know whether you're debiting your share premium account or you're debiting your retained earnings. You only debit your share premium account if these conditions that are stated here are met. Okay, and you only debit your share premium account up to the amount of the share premium that was initially um, recorded when those um, redeemable preference, when those redeemable shares were issued. And the remainder is debited to your retained earnings account. Um, so this was a June 2007, question three, SimSec. I'm pretty sure our answers will be different um, with the SimSec one. I think will be different on one area. The area will be different on is that um, on this question, SimSec um, only included the ordinary share capital here. Okay, when it was subtracting it from the nominal value. So they said 50,000 minus 154,000, which is the ordinary shares. They did not include a premium account for them to get the amount of money that was going to the capital redemption reserve. So um, take... okay. Sorry? Actually, I wanted to ask if I have a question. Yes, so Zim, the... where did we get the what? The figure, I guess I have a figure. 192,500. No, 192,000. We got it from. Oh, okay. okay. I got it. It's okay. Okay. Yeah. So I was trying to explain the difference you probably see in the Zimsec answer. Zimsec said the nominal value of 350,000 less issue of shares. On the issue of shares, Zimsec only did not the shape. So here, Zimsec less 154,000, which is the ordinary shares, not the share premium. So when you say 350,000 minus 154,000, what you get? Three hundred and fifty, not 54, 350,000 minus 154,000, you get 196,000. So this is the amount of money that what well, is the amount that Zimsec credited um, to its capital redemption reserve and also debited its retained earning with 196. So that's where we have, I guess, a difference. Um, according to my understanding, we have to include the shipping account and what remains is what then goes to the capital redemption reserve account. So that's where we, we, we only have a difference. Okay. But everything else must and should be the same. Any question? No, sir. You are happy? Yes. Capital redemption reserve making sense, and we can stop. Yes.